Binge the full week of The Ray Taylor Show ad-free over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. This is The Ray Taylor Show. Welcome to The Ray Taylor Show, where I bring you the reviews on the latest movies and TV shows, as well as classic and foreign films. I'm your host, Ray Taylor, and on this podcast, I'll be talking about all things film and television. Whether you're looking for a new show to binge or want to know if that blockbuster is worth a trip to the theater, or just want to hear my thoughts on a classic or foreign film, I've got you covered. So join me every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for new episodes, and let's dive into the world of film and and television together on today's episode i am talking about the 2018 remake suspiria the original film uh came out in like the 70s i believe written and directed by dario argento the original this film however the remake directed by luca guadagnino and uh, written by Dario Argento, Daria Nicolaidi, and David Kogjnik. This movie stars a bunch of great actresses, many of which are Chloe Grace Moretz, Tilda Swinton, Dakota Johnson, and Mia Goth. The plot summary for this movie, a darkness swirls at the center of a world-renowned dance academy. One that will engulf the artistic director, an ambitious young dancer, and a grieving psychotherapist. Some will succumb to the nightmare. Others will finally wake up. Overall, I liked this version of the story of Suspiria more than the original. uh, Which I did do a review of the original as well if you want to go back to that review to hear my detailed thoughts on that movie uh but i do believe these movies are trying to do different things it's not a direct remake uh you know it's it's always interesting to see remakes and how directors choose to handle it um usually not a fan of remakes that are carbon copies like the psycho remake i believe was a shot for shot remake it's like why why what's the point uh, whereas this one, I think I, I enjoy the story a lot more uh, in this version of the movie. So not only the story modified, uh, but also the time and place where the story takes place uh, was changed. Uh, the overall aesthetic of the film and the focus of the film changed. Um, while the other one was more of kind of an artistic slasher film. Uh, This one is more of a psychological thriller, I would say, in a lot of ways. Uh, While still the artistry of the film is focused more so on the dance uh, and the dancers and the performances uh, within the film. Uh, Definitely there's a lot of artistry in that, which I did enjoy. I'm going to get into spoilers pretty quick here, but, uh, you know, this one, the time and place, they change from the original um which makes for an interesting backdrop for this film uh the changes that were made uh where the the time and history and what was happening in germany i believe uh this one takes place uh was is uh, plays into the overall narrative uh a bit or is at least a, a nice set piece for uh the narrative similarly kind of reminded me of the Ty west film pearl where, and also X, where the time and place of those films bring a lot to the story, add a lot to the events of uh, those horror films. But I really did enjoy this movie. I want to get into spoilers, though. So if you haven't seen the 2018 Suspiria yet, I would recommend it. I would recommend it over the original. And uh, one of these days, I'll get into all of argento's films and maybe i'll have a better appreciation for the original after getting used to his vibe Um, but uh, i really did enjoy this movie and uh, liked where it went and uh, but i do want to dig in and discuss details so spoilers for 2018 suspiria Uh, this movie opens with a woman at a therapist's uh, office very paranoid glowy uh Chloe Grace Moretz uh, playing this woman uh, who's paranoid about being groomed and used for some purpose. Uh, Obviously, if you've seen the original, 
that you know she's talking about. Uh, you know what she's talking about. But unlike the first film where a lot of that just kind of feels like it comes out of nowhere at the end of the film, uh, it seems like this movie handles it a little bit better, kind of weaves in those themes early on, uh, making her seem like she might be a little bit delusional but clearly something happening uh, at this place. Let's take a quick break from this episode to talk about attention, attention all, all Ray, Ray Taylor, Taylor show, show fans. fans. We're excited to announce we've just released a line of exclusive merchandise featuring original artwork inspired by the show. Our high quality shirts and biodegradable phone cases are a perfect way to show your support for the show and make a great gift for any fan. Plus, with each purchase, you'll be helping us continue to bring you great content. So don't wait. Head on over to InspireDisorder.com now and check out the full collection. Thanks for listening, and we hope you'll show your support by grabbing some Ray Taylor Show merchandise today. And now, let's get back to the show, uh, and which is a very creepy dance academy. A lot of uh, a lot of camera movements, uh, changing directions to look. At the same scene in like mirrors and reflections, uh, then focus through windows. Like there's a lot of change of perspective in this, uh, or the camera spinning. A lot of interesting camera movements. Very kind of disorienting as well, um, from wide angle shots to close up shots. Uh, a lot of it feels like things aren't as they seem type of a, a vibe to it. Very ominous. Uh, and also a lot of long takes, which I appreciate that as well. In the background, there's this like political upheaval, these terrorist attacks that are kind of happening on the, in the background of this movie that aren't in the original. Uh, you have the psychotherapist in this. It took a while before I understood who was playing this old man. Uh, but it's clear that it is somebody wearing old age makeup. Uh, and then come to find out it's Tilda Swinton who plays three characters in this movie, two of which are in heavy prosthetics. Uh, but uh, she also plays the head of the school as herself. Uh, Tilda Swinton's amazing. I want to dive into her career after having seen Tar, which was an interesting film as well. Great performance from her. Seeing her all three performances in this, which the old man makeup was clear that it was old age makeup. Um, but I do enjoy what I assume to be the reason for that is that the it's a just to maintain an all woman cast. I don't think there's any male characters anywhere in this movie uh, where that's not true for the first film so i think to maintain that uh is why she chose to play the uh, and that's just an assumption i don't know if that's for sure but very interesting choice to do that and the school is more like interpretive dance right uh, and only adds to kind of the disorder and the chaos and the amb ambiguity of what's going on, this this interpretive dance, which looks like dancers general. I mean, dancers in any form almost look like there's a level of possession going on. Uh, but interpretive dance specifically has that feeling because the movements can be very interesting and odd and 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 strange, which lends itself to making it seem even more like the person is being possessed which in this movie is amazing is great because there is possessions going on There's, there is a level of supernatural witchcraft going on so i love that that is also mirrored in the style of dance and even though it's this interesting dance style I think it still works. Like, I think it, it doesn't, it could easily be cheesy. It could easily be uh, something that just doesn't work or feel right, feels cheesy. But I, I didn't have that at all. I, I, I felt like it was, and even when you see whether it's from the, the practices they do uh, or the finished, when you actually see the finished performance, I think it, it all feels legit which I think adds to 
uh, just one of the one of the main reasons I like this movie. Um, and there's this idea that the dance itself can be dangerous if not done precisely, which is interesting. It's I it's all these little interesting elements uh, to what we're being in, introduced to in this movie. Uh, and the scene there's a scene that cuts back and forth between her doing the dance, our main character doing the dance uh, solo. And other girls, this other girl who's trapped uh, in the, uh, like, this other room uh, being possessed by this, this mirrored room. Uh, and she's being possessed by this dance. So there's, like, this connection that, and probably what they were speaking to, the danger involved uh, between the dancer, the person performing the dance, and uh, a person, this other person in this other room that's being possessed. Um, some of the dance move and some of the dance moves are interesting because they almost seem like martial arts moves, which I I don't know. It, it, I I really enjoyed the look of all of that. And to the woman who's seemingly being beaten up and thrown around, it kind of fits as well. Then twisted up, uh, this woman that's being possessed kind of fits with what's happening to her the the whole idea of the dance looking like possession the the movements almost look like martial arts movements um and then she ends up getting like wrung out right forcing like saliva and urine to pool up on the floor face being deformed right very intense scene meanwhile the instructors look as if they're receiving pleasure watching it like they're they're really enjoying seeing the performance probably knowing what it's causing in the other room dream sequences possibly right maybe these these moments a, a lot of cuts between different images of her being punished for touching herself um which i assume those sequences are, are dream sequences possibly uh, shots of uh, a single person sometimes just screaming but not you know like this a silent scream uh, in a wig clutching pearls mirror shattering just kind of these like these almost like uh like art house type of just these these images uh that we're seeing landscape shattered mirrors uh bloody hands painting an a on the wall like these these cut scenes of these these interesting just visuals and you have uh floating colors that are like a spirit of, of some sort feels like a visual representation of what the audio hallucinations uh that i get sound like like you see this this like f these floating like spiraling colors that are almost ghost-like that are very like spastic and like echoes like these these like fast whispering echoes that reminded me the visuals of that reminded me sometimes i get audio hallucinations uh that i've described in the past that almost sound like um like whispering like fast paced whispering nothing intelligible that i can like hear i'm not like hearing actual voices or, or things being said but it just sounds like like a, a tape is being played f at fast speed in another room is kind of what it sounds like this like chaotic kind of thing and that the visual representation of this this ghost the spirit thing reminded me of that very chaotic without form right like it's hard to to really you can tell that it's a thing but you can't you, you can't really put it together everything that it is i don't know let's take a quick break from this episode because i want to promote are you looking for a way to take your love of the ray taylor show to the next level look no further than inspired disorder plus as a member you'll get access to a whole host of amazing perks including the full week of shows ad free in both audio and video versions a live painting archive early access to the many faces members only discounts and deals a podcast back catalog with over 
600 episodes. But that's not all. As a member, you'll get access to my personal blog as well as my creative writing. You'll also get the chance to ask me anything you want. With all of these benefits and more, Inspire Disorder Plus is a must-have for any fan of The Ray Taylor Show. So don't wait. Go sign up now. Head on over to InspireDisorder.com slash plus and start enjoying all of the amazing perks of the membership. And now, let's get back to the show. Uh, very stylistically different from the original, right? The story fleshed out a little bit different in this movie as well, right? I like this version a lot more than the original, but they're definitely doing different things. The political and historical tie-ins didn't really make much sense. Maybe out of ignorance, maybe if I was more familiar with uh, those historical events, they would play into it more, right? So maybe if, if I wasn't ignorant and did some research, it would, uh, provide context potentially, uh, Tilda Swinton in this playing three characters is kind of wild. Um, the, uh, dance ritual reminds me of the end of the show OA which is a very kind of a weird end. I, I ultimately liked that show, uh, and I think they did a second season, which I don't, I don't think did well. But there was like this dance that the dance was like a ritual that made a magical thing happen. And there's a similar thing that happens in this. Obviously, the dancing, the possessions, all of those things are, are a big aspect of this movie. Right? Casting a spell using movement instead of words. Uh, very interesting idea because movement is f a far more universal thing. Dance, far more universal thing than making noise mouths, mouth noises with your mouth, right? So d it kind of makes sense that you'd be able to perform like spells using movement instead of saying words, uh, because movement w would predate language. Uh, so it, it, I don't know. I really enjoyed that idea, that aspect of the movie. And this movie in a lot of ways would welcome repeated views because there are a lot of, there's a, like a lot of ambiguity and a lot of things you can read into it. Uh, similarly, I would say to the movie men, which I really enjoyed, uh, it's very divisive film. Some people people didn't like it i really did enjoy men as well as mother with an exclamation point uh both very weird interesting movies this one very much the same i would say in line with those i mean, very open to interpretation a lot of metaphors uh in in the the narrative uh but great performances in this movie from the cast a lot of up-and-coming female talent for sure mia goth one instantly one of my favorite uh actresses but so many other great performers uh in this movie as well but i did i love the blend of art and supernatural specifically uh, from an all-female dance academy and that also being a place of witchcraft which is an all-female organization as well right they seem to blend very nicely um and, uh, you know, the idea of the dancing looking like a person in just in general when people dance, it almost feels like they're being controlled by something else being possessed. And I, I think that works well with the actual possession that happens in this movie. Um, the blend of cult and witchcraft far better, I would say, than the first movie that it felt. The first movie felt like it was right. There was some crazy kill scenes. Um, great practical effects, very bright colors, but the witchcraft stuff really felt like it came out of nowhere in the first one, where this one, it's, it's blended a lot better, um, just handled in a lot better way. Uh, Tilda Swinton is great, despite the fact that the old age makeup was very clearly couldn't tell it was her but it, clearly it was somebody i at no point did i believe it was an old man and even her old man voice didn't really work but i i i appreciate the the swing as it were and eventually i'll do a top five uh on on tilda swinton 
I think I, I, I want to dive into her movies as I did recently with Mia Goth. Uh, that's why I'm reviewing this movie because not only did I review the original and wanted to review the follow up to that, but also Mia Goth in this movie was one of the movies that may or may not have been on my top five where I rank my top five favorite Mia Goth films. Um, so I should do, I'll probably be doing one of those for Tilda Swinton coming up. Uh, as well because she's she's great in this and pretty much great in everything maybe not always the best casting for things but she's still great in everything that i see her in uh but i want to that's it for this episode i want to thank everybody for tuning into this episode of the ray taylor show i do hope that you enjoyed my thoughts on suspiria uh, from 2018 uh it, it, it's a great i really did enjoy this movie don't forget to tune in every monday wednesday and friday for more movie and tv show reviews and join the conversation by leaving a comment or rating on your favorite podcast platform or over on youtube.com slash inspired disorder until next time enjoy the show subscribe to the ray taylor show on youtube and everywhere podcasts are found binge the full week ad free over at inspired disorder.com slash plus Purchase Ray Taylor Show merch over at InspiredDisorder.com. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Peace. Out. Today is the day where you wake up and you realize that everything that you've been dreaming about, everything that you've been wanting, every goal and wish and hope that you've ever had can become real. Dreams can come true. What you manifest in your mind, you can bring to reality.